Hello everyone, Zia Ose on this side. Let's start with a brief introduction of mine. I've done MSc Zoology. I've qualified CSI and JRF with All India Rank 65. I've qualified SET Maharashtra as well. And one more exam that is called as PET for the PhD. Currently, I'm doing my PhD at SPPU, Pune. Okay, so now like the time has come that we should be dealing with the proper topic of our today's lecture. That's called as Organic Evolution. It's called as Organic Evolution. Now, what does the evolution means? Evolution is extremely slow process, extremely slow process of continuous change by means of which new types of organs or organisms are formed. Evolution is the slow process by which new types of organs or the organisms are formed. Basically, it may be of four different types like the progressive evolution, retrogressive, parallel and convergent. So dealing with the first thing first, it's the progressive evolution. The progressive evolution, when there is over increasing in the complexity in the structure, which means like the simple organism has become the complex in the next and the next generations, this will be called as progressive evolution. And if I'm dealing with the retrogressive, when there is a gradual decline or the degeneration of the complexities or the complex tissues, it's called as retrogressive evolution which means like the progressive is the forward whereas retrogressive is the backward now dealing the third and the fourth at the same time like the parallel evolution and the convergent evolution in case of the parallel evolution when structurally similar types show identical changes in the identical condition of environment and in case of the convergent when a change occur in the same direction in types which were dissimilar to start with. We'll be dealing with the homologous organ and the analogous organ for this case, but still for the time being, deal with these are the four types of evolution. Now, I'll be just dealing with the case here. Evidences of evolution, like how come like the, the proofs or like the science is providing the proof of evolution. To support the theory of evolution, there are different fields of the science which are giving the evidences which are here. The first evidence is from taxonomy. Here, in case of the taxonomy, the phylogenetic trees in the scheme of classification, the phylogenetic trees in the scheme of classification provides a proof of descent from the common ancestor. In case of the taxonomy, we do have a common ancestor as well in the cladogram whenever we are studying we have a common ancestor and this common ancestor is giving none other than the evolution phenomena if you are dealing with a comparative anatomy as well like the formation of the organs or the study of functional anatomy is called as tectology the study of functional anatomy is called as tectology so here like the internal organs study is called as anatomy and i'll be dealing with the two times of the organs like what i said parallel and the convergent so the first one i'll be dealing is homologous organs the first thing I am dealing is homologous organs. These are similar in origin, but they are dissimilar in function. Just deal with this similar in origin, but dissimilar in function. Similar in origin, but dissimilar in function. Here, if you will be dealing like the four limbs of the tetrapoda, like the flippers of whale or seal, wings of bat and the cat's pad. All of them are four limbs. Even like the four limb of horse, human and the wing of bird all of them are homologous organ but they are having different function they are having different function they have originated as same but now they have evolved in such a fashion that all of them are having different kind of functions the four limbs can be modified for swimming flying running and grasping but still all of them are having like the common ancestor that is what we call as the homologous now here we are having analogous organ analogous organ which is similar in function but dissimilar in origin analogous are exactly opposite to the homologous analogous organ are similar in function but dissimilar in origin examples wings of birds and wings of butterflies wings of birds and wings of butterflies when we are dealing with the wing of a bird, that is a four limb, but wing of butterfly is not a four limb, rather it is a kind of 
exoskeleton which is found in the butterfly even like the gills of palemon and the gills of fishes both of them are having like the same function which is like the exchange of gases but still they don't have the same origin so deal with the cases even like there's a field called as vestigial like if you are dealing with the vestigial organs they are non functional and rudimentary vestigial organs mean they are non functional and rudimentary which are in, like in some organism they are they are like in the functional organs but still in some of the animals they are non functional for example if i'll be dealing with the first one it's called as plica semilunaris which is called as a nictitating membrane which is functional in fishes but non functional in the mammals but still it is present in the mammals as well the second is the external ear that is what we call as the muscle of the ear pinna external ear it is vestigial in the mammals especially body hairs we don't need any kind of body hair but still we are having body hairs mammary glands in the male males ha do have mammary glands but those mammary glands are vestigial they are not able to secrete any kind of secretions appendix which is like used to uh, in case of the herbivore mammals even like appendix is responsible for the secretion of cellulase which is used to break down the cellulose but in case of the humans especially the appendix is vestigial canine and teeth and the third molar these are the special teeth which are like uh, which are specially present in the carnivorous animals but still they are present here in the mammals especially in the humans as well coccyx the last vertebrae which are which used to be called as the tail vertebrae they are also still present in the humans skeleton now like the paniculus carnosis which is called as a subcutaneous muscle for moving the skin this is also present in the uh, humans as well but still this is vestigial for sure but this is giving a huge proof for this is literally giving a huge proof for the evolution studies now here if you will be dealing with the hind limb in the python and boa the pelvic girdle and the pinna of whale and the wings of flightless bird these are also the vestigial like the python had vestigial rudimentary hind limbs even the boas have there is a pelvic girdle and the external ear pinna in the whale and even the flightless birds are having wings these are the rudimentary organ now msh that is a melanocyte stimulating hormone is secreted by the parts intermedia of the pituitary but still this has vestigial function or it's a vestigial hormone this is also giving a huge impact on the study of evolution like proofing them now okay here okay so there are a lot of connecting links in between the different different forms of the life which will be showing about the evolution so the first thing if i'll be dealing with here like i'm just zooming it out now viruses these are the connecting link between the living and non living viruses are connecting link between living and non living the second one is one of the most famous protozoa of all time like this is the only protozoa which is studied exactly in the same proportion as in the plants and as in the animals because euglena is a connecting link between the plants and animals now here dealing with the proterospongia it is a protozoa which is a connecting link between the protozoa and the porifera please do remember these things hopefully you will be able to remember if you are not please note them down on a notebook page please because like one of the question will be coming from this side for sure now peripetus this is one of the famous arthropod peripetus which is the connecting link in between the annelida and the arthropoda peripetus is a connecting link between the annelida and arthropoda okay neopylina neopylina is a, is a mollusk which is connecting link between the annelida and the mollusca please do remember these cases as well okay here comes like the most famous hemichordate that is called as a balanoglossus which is a connecting link between the chordate and the non chordata balanoglossus is a connecting link between chordates and non chordates please deal with the thing dipnoi the lung fishes here if i'll be dealing with the dipnoi uh, they are the basically like the connecting link between the pisces and the amphibian archaeopteryx which is like uh, uh, in the category of apes 
is the connecting link between reptiles and birds now the last but not the least one it is the prototheria which is a mammal which is a connecting link between the reptiles and mammals prototheria okay now here like the, like the last one is the living fossils which are representative of its own group basically like there are some living fossil along like uh, if you are preparing for the competitive exam like this topic is very important for you peripetus is a living fossil in the phylum arthropoda limulus is in the phylum arthropoda limulus is also called as king crab as well nautilus is in the mollusca neopylina is in the mollusca and the sphenodon it's in the reptilia now i'm having latimeria as well which is a fish a living fossil okay like the embryology okay i'm dealing with the embryology now like the uh, to support the evolution theory in case of the embryological stages of the different group of organism have a striking same similarity like the pharyngeal cleft all the organism are having pharyngeal arch everyone is having embryonic tail are found in the uh, uh, embryonic conditions in the embryonic conditions and one more thing is like the development of the kidney that is a pronephric mesonephric and the metanephric kidney all of them are like uh, like sharing the same origin but still like uh, nowadays like they have evolved in so much like the kidney is of three different types that is called as a protonephric the mesonephric and the metanephric hopefully this lecture is beneficial for you guys thank you thank you very much